Hello and good morning. Welcome to worship here at Bread of Life Deaf Lutheran Church. My name is Michelle Lewis. And this is my sign name and I am the pastor here. And welcome again to our worship. Hello, my name is Dorothy Sparks. I'm happy that you are able to join us today in our worship. Hello, and my name is Wendy DeVore, and I'm the interpreter for today. Today is February 28th, which is the second Sunday of Lent. Our focus today is breaking the chains of our own pride and the chains that keep us comparing ourselves to others for the sake of celebrating that grace is given for all. And today we celebrate the Lord's Supper. So gather your bread and your cup for later in worship. And please light a candle at home as we enter into worship today. Let this be the season you turn your face toward the one who calls to you. Please follow along. Return, return to the Lord. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always and also with you. Prayer of the day. Lord, you are holy and you have mighty power. Your word is powerfully dangerous. Your word casts out demons. Your word heals incurable diseases. Your word devours empires. Your word transforms the fabric of the universe. Help us to stand in awe and fear of what your word is capable of doing. Give us courage to share your word and wisdom to accept it. 
We ask this to honor Jesus Christ. He is the one who can destroy sin. Amen. And now a reading from Psalms 122, a psalm by, from David. I was happy when the people said, let us go to the Lord's temple. Here we are standing at the gates of Jerusalem. This is New Jerusalem. The city has been rebuilt as one united city. This is where the tribes come. The tribes who belong to the Lord. The people of Israel come here to praise the Lord's name. The kings from David's family put their thrones here. They set up their thrones to judge the people. Pray for peace in Jerusalem. May those who love you find peace. May there be peace within your walls. May there be safety in your great buildings. For the good of my family and neighbors, I pray that there will be peace here. For the good of the temple of the Lord our God, I pray that good things will happen to this city. And now, the gospel lesson from Luke 13, verses 1 through 9 and 31 through 35. Some people there with Jesus at the time told Jesus about what had happened to some wor worshipers from Galilee. Pilate had them killed. Then Pilate mixed their blood with the blood of the animals they brought for sacrifice. Jesus answered, do you think this happened to those people because they were more sinful than all other people from Galilee? No, they were not. But if you do not decide now to change your lives, you will all be destroyed like those people. And what about those 18 people who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them? Do you think they were more sinful than everyone else in Jerusalem? They were not. But I tell you, if you do not decide now to change your lives, you will all be destroyed too. Jesus told this story. A man had a fig tree. He planted it in his garden. He came looking for some fruit on it, but he found none. The man said to his gardener, I have been looking for fruit on this tree for three years but I never find any. Cut it down. Why should it waste the ground? But the gardener answered, Master, let the tree have one more year to produce fruit. Let me dig up the dirt around it and fertilize it. Maybe the tree will have fruit on it next year. If it still does not produce, 
then you can cut it down. Just then, some Pharisees came to Jesus and said, go away from here and hide. Herod wants to kill you. Jesus said to them, go tell that fox. Today and tomorrow, I am forcing demons out of people and finishing my work of healing. Then the next day, the work will be finished. After that, I must go, because all prophets should die in Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you kill the prophets. You stone to death the people God has sent to you. How many times I wanted to help your people. I wanted to gather them together as a hen gathers her chicks under her wings. But you did not let me. And now your home will be left completely empty. I tell you, you will not see me again until the time when you will say, Welcome. God bless the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Here ends the gospel reading. I remember some time back that there was this deaf couple that was out on the river paddling along in a canoe. And they had seen a log that was up on the bank side and they saw a baby raccoon walking out on this log. So they paddled over to see the baby raccoon. However, they saw the mama raccoon nearby and they paddled off quickly. So you can imagine how a mother raccoon would respond if you got too close. They're very protective. I remember uh, when I was younger, we used to have an Irish setter at home who was very friendly, but she had puppies. And we had some friends that came over and I said, come go look at the new puppies that we have. So he entered the room and then he quickly came running out of the room. I said, what's going on? And he said, look. And I saw that our Irish setter was standing up and staring at him and she was not wagging her tail. She was guarding her puppies. And I'm sure you have probably had these same experiences where you've seen a mother of some kind, either a uh, an, an animal, a mother animal, or a human being who is very protective of their children. Well, this is also true about Jesus. He was filled with a great desire to protect us. Now, it says here in the reading that the Pharisees had gone to Jesus and they told him to leave, leave quickly. Now, we're not certain if the Pharisees did this out of concern and to protect him from King Herod, or they were just trying to get rid of him. So we don't know their intention of telling him to leave. And you would think that if someone received this type of warning, that they would leave and hide to save their life. 
However, Jesus continued on to Jerusalem. Jesus told the Pharisees, he said, tell that fox that today, tomorrow, and the next day, I will be ordering demons to leave and to continue on with healing people. And after this, my work will be finished. But, and then I must go on to Jerusalem because that is where the prophets and the messengers die and are killed. So as Jesus looked on to Jerusalem, he grieved and he wept because he knew he could not force people to believe or to accept him. And so this broke his heart. If it, he had a broken heart when people rejected him and he knew that he was going to suffer for our sin and for our sake. Now Jesus could have avoided Jerusalem but he proceeded onward. I had read a story about this one farmer who was raising some chickens. So there was a mother hen that was sitting on her nest of eggs. And she was sitting on those eggs and guarding them. And then this rooster came along and was calling out to her. To, to leave the nest. And she refused to leave that nest. And so when she didn't leave, this rooster began pecking her on her head and she withstood this abuse. And he continued to peck away at her until she passed out. Now, I don't know exactly what happened here but the, the rooster destroyed the eggs. So these eggs did not survive. So when the farmer saw this, he got rid of the rooster. And the eggs were destroyed. So he went to a farmer who was uh, a neighbor and was received some more eggs from the farmer and placed them in the nest. And then he put drops of water on this hen who had blacked out and she came to and got back up on the nest and began guarding and caring for those eggs. So while she was being abused, she refused to leave those eggs. And when she recovered, she continued to care for them. Well, this is also true about Jesus. He did not leave. And he continued on to Jerusalem and carried the cross for our sake. And even today, we are still under the protection of God's wings. Sometimes we stray. And then God calls to us and brings us back on the right path again. Sometimes we make the wrong decisions and God guides us back to the right decisions. God continues to give us peace and frees us from our chains. And we thank God for the generosity and the constancy in his caring and protection. Lord, help us to continue to keep our focus on you and to look to you for our help and to continue in our learning and that we continue to open our minds and our hearts so that we can continue to love you more and to love others as well. Help us to remember to praise you more often. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Let me be as 
skies to you. Pray that I might have the grace to let you be my servant too. I will weep when you are weeping, when you laugh, I'll laugh with you. I will share your joy and sorrow till we've seen this journey through. When we sing to God in heaven, we shall find such harmony, born of all we've known together, of Christ's love and agony. Will you let me be your servant, let me be as Christ to you? Let us pray. Prayers of the people. Merciful God, help us to know your presence during our Lent journey. Teach us again about baptism, a gift from you. Help us share our resources to glorify you and to help others. Every day, remind us to pray. Turn our attention toward others. Show us that our treasures are in you alone, O oh God. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Now please share a sign of God's peace with one another. Dorothy, peace be with you and also with you. Before we uh, put out our Lent candle, I just wanted to mention that the link for our paper chain for today, the Bible verse is um, Uh, the Bible verse is for is from the Bible lesson that Dorothy shared. It's Luke chapter 13, verse 34. And it makes the same point that Dorothy made that God gathers us under her wings and takes care of us is like home when we are lost. And that this is what um Jesus is promising in his, um, uh, his focus on arriving in Jerusalem. So I wanted to make sure to call your attention to that um, in this next week and that you um, add to your paper chain. Right. Uh, so this is the second Sunday of Lent. 
And each Sunday, uh, or each of the special days in Lent, we put out a candle on the candles that are at the sanctuary. It kind of reminds us that it feels like there is more darkness than light, or that there is, it's like all of the problems in the world are more overwhelming and they're too big for us to tackle. We put out a candle each of those weeks. But as we do that, we also share this story about Jesus. We share the story that Jesus was willing to be, um, care for us and love us, even though we betray him. And that Jesus is willing to suffer and even willing to die on the cross so that we all can see how much God loves us. And so this Sunday of Lent, where our focus is about how sometimes our pride makes us think we are better than others. We look at others and we think, oh, I'm better than they are. I wouldn't be like Jerusalem when Jesus is heartbroken about Jerusalem or sometimes when we compare ourselves to other other people we fall into despair because we think we're not as good as someone else and so the truth is that way God shows through us when we trust that God's grace is enough and that God accepts us fully because God's grace is both humbling for us and it says to our pride, you know, you're not better than anyone else. And God's grace lifts us up out of despair because that grace says, you are so precious to me. I love you. So when we trust that God's grace is enough, that God accepts us just as we are and accepts us completely in that hope and promise that God offers, it shines out through our lives. And so even though we have this practice of putting out a candle each week. And we are saying, gee whiz, it, the, it, the world's problems are too much for us. And we acknowledge our own mistakes and sins. As we put out the candles, we also say, Lord, help us follow you. Help us trust your grace. So now uh, Dorothy, uh, I have Dorothy put out a candle and I'm gonna add this paper chain, this link to my paper chain. And now let us pray. God, as we journey through this holy season of Lent, give us strength and courage to follow you more closely. Open our hearts and minds to your constant presence. Help us to put our trust in you. Amen.
My friends, as we turn our gaze and attention to the Lord during the season of Lent, we are invited to put our faith into action. And active faith has some different elements to it. It can look like self-examination and repentance, turning around for God. It can look like prayer and fasting, having a regular schedule of prayer and perhaps not eating for some part of a day or maybe a whole day. Active faith looks like giving generously and serving others with kindness and love. And it looks like receiving the gifts of word and sacraments through the Lord's Supper and remembering your baptism. And right now, as in every week in our worship service, right now is an opportunity for generous giving. We ask uh, for your financial support to this church to help us continue our mission, which is to share the good news that God loves deaf people and their families, and that here at Bread of Life, we love deaf people and their families too. So we endeavor, we work to share the good news. God loves you. So we invite you to give generously. And you can send a check to Bread of Life we do check our mailbox uh, multiple times a week, so it won't be sitting outside. Or you can give online, um, and that information is available on our website. You can use PayPal or um, our Give to the Max Day website as well. So we invite you to prepare your offerings at this time. And now our offering prayer. Let us give God our gifts and pray. Lord, when you open your hands, we are filled with good things. May these gifts be signs of our gratitude and the love which embraces all your children. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is our duty and our delight that we should everywhere and always give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ. You call your people to cleanse their hearts and to prepare with joy for the feast that celebrates the mysteries of your Passover. You call your people to cleanse their hearts so that our joy is renewed in the gift of baptism. You call your people to cleanse their hearts so that we can trust in you. And because of that, 
we will know the fullness of your So with the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, together we praise your name and join their unending hymn. We invite you to join in and return to the Lord with us. This will not be for you. On the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he gathered together with his friends and followers to eat. Our Lord Jesus took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance. Again, after supper, Jesus took the cup, thanked God, blessed it, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new agreement in my blood for the shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. We invite you to sign the Lord's Prayer. Again, this will not be voice. Return to the Lord your God. Follow the Lord your God. You are all invited to the table, for this table belongs to God. And we are honored to share it with anyone who desires to be. When you serve one another, use language something like this, with the bread, body of Christ given for you, and with the cup, blood of Christ shed for you. the body of Christ given for you. And the blood of Christ shed for you.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. Humble and self-giving God, We now leave to go out into the world. Send us with the power of the Holy Spirit to share your love to all the world. Amen. Receive the blessing before you go. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Now go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. <laughs>